Gabamaru tells Sagiri about a flashback he had. He witnessed the chief of Iwagakir showing off his immortality by having his shinobi inflict fatal damage to his body with weapons, but he still stood tall and unharmed. Gabamaru also mentions that the chief achieved this immortality by drinking a medicine he got from a faraway land across the sea. Based on this, Gabamaru believes that the elixir of life actually exists but doesn't think it's on the island where they are right now. Sagiri and Gabamaru are walking, and Sagiri is admiring the beautiful scenery, while Gabamaru has a different opinion. He thinks the environment is unnatural and advises caution. Sagiri notices Gabamaru has removed the ropes that bound his hands and orders him to tie them back up since it's not allowed on their mission. Gabamaru complains about the rule, and also the useless supplies they were given. This annoys Sagiri, who draws her sword close to his neck to make it clear that she's not his ally and threatens to execute him if he doesn't comply. With no other choice, Gabamaru agrees to bind his hands again. Gabamaru and Sagiri interrupted by Warped Kian, who throws an iron ball at Gabamaru. But Gabamaru, being a skilled shinobi, anticipates the attack and dislocates his neck, avoiding any harm. However, he points out that Kian's hands are untied, which Sagiri questions as it goes against the rules. But Kian's monitor, Yamada Asaman Kisho, defends the decision and reprimands Sagiri for being a rule follower, which leads to a heated argument between them. Meanwhile, Kian sees this as an opportunity to test out his weapons on Gabamaru and suggests killing the other criminals to give him more time to search for the elixir. Sagiri and Kisho allow the criminals to fight each other, and Gabamaru is forced to defend himself against Kian, who is annoyed with Sagiri's demand to bind his hands. While Gabamaru is readying his hands as ordered by Sagiri, Kian is attacking him with a barrage of weapons. Gabamaru doesn't pay him any attention and stays focused on his task. Once Gabamaru finishes, he uses a spear as leverage to lift Kian in the air and kicks one of his weapons at his chest. Despite being pierced, Kian reveals he has armor attached to his body and stands up, excited to continue the fight. However, Gabamaru manages to kill him using his weapons. Gabamaru had enough of wasting time and requested Sagiri to continue with his assignment to search for the elixir of life. Kisho's convict had died, and he was relieved of his duties, taking Kian's head with him. Sagiri warned Kisho to be careful on his way back home, but he seemed not to care much as he explained that the Shogun was only interested in acquiring the elixir of life, and the criminals had already made their move regardless of the mission's rules. Kisho even suggested executing Gabamaru so that Sagiri could leave as well. However, Gabamaru prevented Kisho from drawing his sword, telling him that he had wasted enough time talking. Gabamaru's only concern was returning to his wife, and he was not going to let anyone stand in his way. Kisho urged Gabamaru to speed up his mission since he foresaw that the number of criminals would gradually decrease over time. If this happened, the Shogun would be forced to reach out to Iwagakir for help. Kisho also warned Sagiri to stay alert and not let her guard down around the criminals, revealing that this mission would determine the next head of their clan. Sagiri was unsure about Gabamaru's true intentions, so she took Kisho's words seriously. She asked Gabamaru which direction he wanted to go, but suddenly sensed hostility and quickly intercepted a sword attack aimed at her from Gabamaru. While Kisho was warning Sagiri about the dangers of the mission, chaos erupted on the island. Aizen was killed by his convict Rokuroda, Chobei managed to break free from Horubo's attack and killed him, and Akaginu was executed for sexual assault. In a flashback, we learn about Gabamaru's upbringing. The chief of Iwagakir disapproved of Gabamaru's parents' decision to raise him outside the village and took the infant under his care. The chief taught Gabamaru that emotions would only make him weak, using Gabamaru's parents as an example. As Sagiri and Gabamaru clashed swords, she reminded him that killing her would be against the mission. However, Gabamaru had other plans. Based on Kisho's words, he believed that the only thing that mattered on this mission was acquiring the elixir of life, even if it meant taking Sagiri's life to prevent Iwagakir from becoming involved if time ran out. Sagiri was authorized to execute Gabamaru, but found herself hesitating when the moment came. Similarly, Gabamaru also found himself unable to follow through with ending Sagiri's life. He remembered his wife's advice to accept his emotions, as she believed that true strength came from them. However, he also remembered the times he had killed as a result of his emotions. After hesitating to make a lethal blow towards Sagiri's neck, 
Gabamaru became worried that he wouldn't receive a pardon or survive the mission. As Gabamaru struggled with the decision of whether or not to take Sagiri's life, he remembered the chief's words from his past urging him to rid himself of his emotions to become strong. Suddenly, his mind became clear and he was able to snap Sagiri's blade with ease. But Sagiri wasn't about to give up just yet. She acted quickly, using her scabbard to block Gabamaru's next attack. Despite her efforts, Gabamaru suggested that she should give up since she couldn't hope to win. However, he also acknowledged that her death would make him feel uneasy in the end. Hearing Gabamaru's conflicting statements, Sagiri mocked him for contradicting his supposed emotionless nature. This ended up reminding Gabamaru of who he truly was and what he believed in. As Gabamaru has Sagiri pinned down on the ground, he starts to accept the fact that he is Gabamaru the Hollow and is willing to kill her like he has done with his other victims. This realization scares Sagiri as she sees how dangerous he really is. However, Gabamaru's hesitation to strike Sagiri shows her that he is not as hollow as he once believed. His wife's influence starts to override the Iwagakir chief's influence, which causes him to become frustrated with himself since he thinks that he has no chance of surviving and seeing his wife again if he gives in to his emotions. As Sagiri watches this emotional battle within Gabamaru, she realizes that he is not truly devoid of emotion. He has been grieving over the lives he has taken since the two first met, and his struggles have allowed her to confront her own emotions. Sagiri spoke with empathy as she shared her belief with Gabamaru that true strength lies in embracing our emotions. This resonated with Gabamaru, who remembered his wife's words. As he brought the scabbard around his sword, Sagiri revealed that although she had the power to execute him, she chose to overlook his actions. Instead, she wished for Gabamaru to confront his emotions and take back control of his life, while also wanting to confront her own emotions. With a sense of finality, Sagiri returned Gabamaru's sword to its scabbard and pointed out that he had changed and was no longer his old self. As Gantetsusai and the Yamada Asamon set foot on the island, their mission to find man-made statues begins. But things take a dark turn when Gantetsusai gets stung by a human-faced butterfly on his left hand. With a sickening realization, he remembers the Bloom soldier on display at the gathering and promptly cuts off his own hand. As the Asamon watches in horror, Gantetsusai's hand starts turning into bark. But Gantetsusai's shock quickly turns into excitement as swarms of human-faced butterflies and centipedes emerge. His joy is short-lived, though, as a giant suddenly appears out of nowhere, leaving Gantetsusai bewildered. Meanwhile, Gabamaru and Sagiri come face to face with a bizarre six-armed fish creature. Gabamaru wastes no time in protecting Sagiri, telling her to stay back while he faces the creature on his own. And with that, we conclude this episode.